Speaker, I yield two and a half minutes to an American patriot, someone who's been relentless in his efforts to stop America from blundering into foreign adventures. Congressman Ron Paul from Texas. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for two and one half minutes. I uh, thank the gentleman for yielding. I think, this, I think this bill would be better named if we called it Obsession with Iran Act 2012. Because this is what we continue to be doing, is obsessed with Iran and the idea that Iran is a threat to our national security. Iran happens to be a third world nation. They have no significant Navy, Air Force, intercontinental ballistics missiles. The IAEA and our CIA said they're not on the verge of a nuclear weapon. It's so similar to what we went through in the early part of the, uh, this last decade when we were beating the war drums to go to war against Iraq. And it was all, all a facade. There was no danger from Iraq. So this is what we're doing, beating the war drums uh, once again. Now, since the bill has come back from the uh, conference, it, we're going to deal with civil liberties in Syria. Well, I happen to be a civil libertarian. I'm very concerned about civil liberties. But let me tell you, this bill is not going to do anything to enhance the civil liberties of the individuals in Syria. Now, if we were really interested in, the civil, liber in civil liberties, why wouldn't we look to ourselves? Why wouldn't we look to the things that we do here? What about our warrantless searches under the Patriot Act? What about the policy of assassination and assassinating American citizens? What about arrest by the military, National Defense Authorization Act? What about the drone warfare that we go on? Do you think we're protecting civil liberties by arbitrarily dropping drones or threatening to rob drones any place in the world with innocent people dying? If we want to really care about civil liberties in Syria, why don't we care about the secret prisons we have and the history of torch that we've had in this country? What about the fact that kill lists are being made by the executive branch of government and we sit idly by and approve of it by saying nothing and the American people put up with it and we march in this direction, marching into a determination to have another war. When you put on sanctions on a country, it's an act of war, and that's what this is all about. The first thing you do when war breaks out between two countries is, is you put uh, sanctions on them. You, you blockade the country. So this is an act of war. What would we do if somebody blockaded and put sanctions on us and prevented the importation of any product in this country? We'd be furious, we'd declare war, we'd go to war. So we are the antagonists. We're over there poking our nose and poking our nose in other people's affair, just looking for the chance to start another war. First it's Syria, then Iran. We have too many wars. We need to stop the wars. We don't have the money to fight these wars any longer. Gentlemen, for yielding, I'm still rather impressed with the obsession over a weapon that does not exist and no concern whatsoever about many nuclear weapons that are held by countries that never even join the Nuclear uh, Non-Proliferation uh, Treaty. It is called for in the debate that Iran should end all its nuclear programs, but they're permitted to have their nuclear programs under the Non-Proliferation Treaty. And uh, the other countries that have weapons, and including the uh, countries that hold the weapons that came from the Soviet system, seems like that would be a much greater danger. You know, the, um, the, the, the investigation by the UN or by our CIA has never indicated that they've ever enriched above 20 percent. And they said they won't even do it to 20 percent if they would merely allow it, the West would cooperate and sell them this material. They said, we don't need it, but we need 20% enrichment for nuclear uh, isotopes, medical isotopes. So our refusal to deal with them prompts them to take it up enrichment to 20%. 5%, of course, is what they're allowed to do uh, for uh, nuclear, nuclear energies. But this, this idea that we can badger people and then defy the law, what we're asking them to do, if to close down their program, is you're asking them to defy international law. They agreed to this. They have a right to do this under this treaty. And uh, for, the, for us to come and say, well, they must quit it, I think it really is very close to uh, an obsession on a country that 
is incapable of attacking us or attacking. They, they don't have a history of invading their neighboring countries. The last time they were at war was with Iraq, and we bugged Iraq to go into Iran. So I, I find this very distressing that the obsession continues. I find it very, very upsetting that this vote will, of course, be overwhelmingly in support of correcting the civil liberties of Syria and making Iran toe the line and give up on something that they're permitted to do. A vote for this, in my opinion, in time will show that it's just one more step to another war that we don't need, we have not been provoked, they are not a threat to our national security, and we should not be doing this. We've been doing it too long. For the last 10, 15 years, we're just obsessed with this idea that we go to war and uh, try to solve all the problems of the world. At the same time, it is bankrupting us. I strongly urge a no vote on this resolution.